This video gives instructions on how to set up SPAT, or signal phase and timing, and map messages. By the end of this video, you will understand what these messages are, how to make up a map file, and how to configure your signal controller and Vita X Hub to send and receive these messages. SPAT and MAP are two message sets developed under the Society of Automotive Engineers J2735 standard. Both of these messages are broadcast by the roadside equipment so that approaching mobile devices such as vehicles within the range of the wireless communication medium can receive the message and take appropriate action. There is a free open source tool available to create a map developed by USDOT. It is called the ISD Message Creator and is available at webapp2.connectedvcs.com. You may use this tool to create a map file. There are presentations and videos on how to create a map file linked below this video, but we will go through some quick basics to help you understand how to do so. You will want to enter the physical address you want to use to create a map file. Then click File, New Parent Map. Click Builder to access the reference point marker and the verified point marker. The reference point marker marks the intersection and gives a location an intersection ID. Drag the reference point marker in the middle of the intersection you want to create a map file for. The verified point marker locates the surveyed point. Place the verified point marker at the surveyed point and change the values in the verified point configuration box to the known surveyed coordinates. The map tool will realign all features of the intersection geometry relative to the verified point marker. This will correct any misalignment in the satellite image of the map and real-world coordinates. At this point, save the file with a revision number. To do this, click File and Save and type the desired revision number. This will download a file with the name identifying the particular revision of the parent map for the designated intersection ID. Then, create a new child map. To do this, click File and New Child Map. The map tool will then ask you to select the parent map by browsing the file explorer. Select the file created in the previous step and click Open. You may now start by drawing the approaches. In this case, we have four approaches. It is important to have numbers on all of the approaches so that the map file can differentiate between them. It is also necessary to designate the approaches as an ingress or egress approach. You may do so by clicking on each approach once you have drawn them. Next, draw the lanes. The start of your lanes must be within the boundary of the approaches in the red boxes. Once they are drawn, number the lanes. To do this, click the first point of the lane you want to configure. You can use the different attributes in the box that pop up including lane type and number to differentiate the lanes. You also need to add the connections between ingress and egress lanes by clicking on connections in the pop-up box. Change the connection ID, two lane number, and the signal group ID to the corresponding lane. For this example, our connection ID is 1 for ingress lane 2, which connects to lane number 5, which is the lane number for the egress lane. We have set the signal group ID to 2, which we will want to be the same as the phase number set in the controller for the particular movement, to ease troubleshooting if needed at a later point. You now want to save this map file. You can have common revision numbers for the parent and child map file as long as the file names would indicate whether it was a parent or child file. The next step is encoding. Click Tools and Encoder. Change the message type to Frame plus Map if you are loading onto an RSU or just Map if you are loading onto Vita X Hub. You will want to change the node offsets to Tight. Tight node offsets provide node positions as an offset from a reference point, which reduces the size of the message and makes it compliant with the latest J2735 standards. Then, click Encode. Copy the contents of the Uper hex box and save it to a text file. The next step is to load the map message onto Vita X Hub for broadcast. After logging into Vita X Hub, the first step is to check the DSRC Message Manager and make sure the IP address with the port number of the RSU is configured correctly. Destination underscore one number is correct. The message destination one must be configured to be sending map messages with the correct provider service identifier or PSID. The syntax for the same is available in the default value section. 
Next, use the Upload File button to upload your map file that was saved as a text file. Once the map is uploaded, expand the map plugin to configure the name and location of the new map file. The best practice is to set the frequency at 1000, as the file is static and this duration is sufficient for any vehicle entering the DSRC range to obtain information about the intersection geometry and make relevant decisions. The final step is to enable the map plugin. You can check the messages tab to ensure that it is broadcasting the map file at the desired interval. Now we will set up the signal phase and timing broadcast. This is the traffic signal controller we are using. The traffic signal controller needs to be configured to send SPAT data to the SPAT application for repackaging and broadcast. There are multiple traffic signal controller standards available. In this case, the controller is configured to send NTCIP 1202 SPAT data to the IP address of Vita XHub. Refer to manufacturer instructions to enable SPAT data transmission to particular IP addresses. When Vita XHub receives the data, it will then be converted to a J2735 SPAT message. It is good to note that some controllers let you know if you can see the server. In this case, the server is Vita XHub. This particular controller has a portion that is called server reachable, and in this case, it says yes to indicate that a device is accessible over the configured IP address. In some cases, there is an extra step involved to get your controller ready. You may have to enable the SPAT messages using an SNMP command. Please refer to your signal controller manufacturer's instructions to do so. Next, open the SPAT plugin on Vita XHub and configure the intersection ID that matches your intersection ID on the map message. You will want to change the intersection name to something easy for you to troubleshoot later. The local IP is the IP address that you are currently using for Vita XHub. The local UDP port is the port number that you would use from the signal controller. The signal group mapping is what links the SPAT message to the map file. You will want to ensure that the phases for the SPAT message match the signal controller group IDs for the lanes in the map message. Make sure that the traffic signal controller IP address is configured correctly. The TSC Remote SNMP port is another vendor-specific configuration. This is the port setup on the controller for incoming SNMP connections. Please refer to your vendor instructions to configure correctly. Now, enable the SPAT plugin. Once enabled, go to the DSRC Message Manager plugin and make sure that you are sending SPAT out with the correct PSID. If changes don't take effect, then it is recommended to disable and re-enable the DSRC Message Manager plugin. Then, go to the Messages tab and look for SPAT messages being sent. To make sure that the RSU is receiving these messages, you will see the message count going up, which is the indicator that the messages are being received and forwarded by the RSU over the wireless interface. This is a test device that we are using to verify the setup. On the screen, you can see the output of the SPAT message. Each lane is associated with a countdown timer. The important thing to note is the status of the light needs to match the observed view of the light. Common mistakes include mismatching lane numbers with phase numbers. If possible, run your traffic signal controller through a test cycle where each phase comes on one at a time so you can't mistake two phases for being on at the same time. Let's review what we've learned. First, we learned what SPAT and MAP messages are. Next, we talked about how to make a MAP file. Then, we configured the signal controller as well as the Vita XHub to send and receive those messages. Lastly, we went over how to check if the lanes and phases are set up properly for troubleshooting. By applying the knowledge from this video, you are ready to set up SPAT and MAP messages in your connected vehicle system. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at CAV Support Services at DOT.gov. Follow along with the rest of the video sequence as we discuss other vital system components.